Hello viewers, in today's session we are going to discuss one important representation of Dirac Delta function uh, as a Gaussian function, right? So in this uh, class we are going to see how we can express the Dirac Delta function uh, with the help of a Gaussian function. So let us start. So viewers, we have already discussed a lot about Dirac Delta function in our earlier uh, lectures and here uh, let us first quickly uh, see the definition of the famous Dirac Delta function, right? So now the uh, one dimensional Dirac Delta function which is denoted by uh, Delta X uh, is defined as a singular function uh, which vanishes everywhere except at X is equal to zero, right? So the Delta function it vanishes everywhere uh, except at this point x is equal to uh, 0 and at this point that is x is equal to 0 uh, this function uh, delta function is so large that the integral of the function uh, over an interval uh, containing that point x is equal to 0 uh, the integral is uh, equal to uh, 1. So at this point x is equal to 0, uh, the delta function has uh, the value, right? And we can uh, define uh, the integral that is uh, from minus infinity to infinity and delta x dx is equal to 1, right? And uh, the delta x is equal to 0 uh, for all values of x which are not equal to uh, 0. So here we are taking the limit of integration as minus infinity to infinity, uh, but it is not necessary uh, that the range of integration uh, is from minus infinity to infinity, right? So uh, the range of integration can be uh, over any domain uh, surrounding the uh, given point at which the uh, delta function is non-zero. So now if we have a point say x is equal to a and uh, uh, this point x is equal to a it falls in the uh, domain that is from say uh, b to d then we can define the uh, delta function as integration from b to d and here we have delta of x minus a dx and this is equal to 1 right and the uh, integration is equal to 1 it means the peak it exists at only at this point x is equal to a and the delta function is 0 at all other points except x is equal to a. So now uh, let us come to our uh, topic in which we have to uh, see the representation of the Dirac delta function uh, as a Gaussian function. So let us first quickly define the Gaussian function. So the Gaussian function is denoted by a g a of x and it is defined as a over square root of pi and e raised to minus a square x square. Right. So here uh, we are defining a Gaussian function of this type and that is g a of x is equal to a uh, divided by square root of pi e raised to minus a square x square right and uh, in this uh, session we'll see that uh, the limit uh, a tends to infinity right so when this a goes to infinity uh, that is the limit a tends to infinity of the gaussian function uh, g a of x is equal to uh, the delta function that is the delta of x. So here I will show that this limit that is uh, limit a tends to infinity of the Gaussian function which is defined like this is equal to uh, the Dirac delta function. So here we, uh, we can easily see that uh, the limit uh, a tends to infinity of the Gaussian function is equal to 0 uh, for x not equal to uh, 0, right? Because see, uh, when a tends to infinity, uh, 
this term that is the exponential term that is e raised to minus a square x square which is equal to 1 over uh, e raised to a square x square. So when a tends to infinity then this term uh, e raised to a square x square it also tends to infinity right. So this term as a whole that is the reciprocal of e raised to a square x square that is 1 over e raised to a square x square it tends to 0 right. So when a tends to infinity then this term tends to uh, 0 right. So the overall limit of the Gaussian function uh, g of uh, a of x is equal to 0. So now let us prove that this limit is equal to uh, the delta function. So what we will do, uh, let us integrate uh, both sides um, within the limits minus infinity to infinity. So we have minus infinity to infinity a limit uh, a tends to infinity uh, the Gaussian function g a of x uh, dx is equal to uh, minus infinity to infinity and here we have the Dirac delta function that is minus infinity to infinity delta x dx right. So now uh, we will show that uh, the value of this integral this integral should be equal to 1 right because we have just seen that uh, uh, when we define the Dirac delta function and then um, the integral minus infinity to infinity delta of x dx should be equal to 1 right. So the delta function is equal to this limit and when we uh, integrate this expression it means this limit from minus infinity to infinity if it gives uh, it, if it gives us 1 and then it implies that the delta function is equal to this limit. So now let us call this integral as i right. So now i can be written as we can take this limit notation out of the integral sign. So we can write it in front of the integral sign we have limit a tends to infinity minus infinity to infinity and here we have the Gaussian function. Right? And this i is equal to uh, minus infinity to infinity delta x dx and we have to show that i is equal to 1. Right? So what we will do we will write limit a tends to infinity here we have minus infinity to infinity and the Gaussian function is given by a over square root of pi e raised to minus a square x square at dx. So now we have to find the value of this integral and uh, we have already seen these type of integrals in uh, beta and gamma functions. So what we will do uh, let us uh, substitute here uh, t is equal to uh, ax right so that uh, x is equal to t over a. Now let us differentiate t with respect to x so we have dt is equal to a dx. Now dx can be written as dt over uh, a right and uh, here the limits of integration are from minus infinity to infinity which remains the same because when x tends to minus infinity then uh, t also tends to minus infinity and similarly uh, the um, uh, upper limit that is when x tends to infinity that is positive infinity then t also tends to positive infinity right. So uh, when we uh, take this substitution uh, the limits that is the lower limit and the upper limit uh, stays the same. So now we can have uh, this expression limit a tends to infinity here we have minus infinity to infinity uh, a over square root of pi this is e raised to minus uh, t square because a square x square uh, from here if we take the square of both sides we will get t square is equal to a square x square right and dx can be replaced uh, by uh, dt over a. So now a and a get cancelled and we are left with 1 over square root of pi 
which is independent of a so we can take it uh, and write in front of this uh, limit notation so we have 1 over square root of pi then we have limit n tends to uh, here we have a tends to infinity and minus infinity to infinity and here we have e raised to minus t square dt right now we can see that this entire integral is independent of a right so we can remove this uh, limit notation so now we have a uh, 1 over square root of pi times this integral now this is a very standard integral and we have seen it uh, uh, in the chapter that is uh, uh, beta and gamma functions and we have seen that the value of the integral uh, minus infinity to infinity and we have e raised to minus x square dx is equal to square root of pi right so here we are using a standard result so we can now have 1 over square root of pi and the value of this integral is uh, equal to square root of pi so here we have square root of pi so these two terms get cancelled and we are left with 1 so viewers we have uh, shown that uh, the value of the integral i is equal to uh, 1 right and uh, our i uh, was uh, this integral that is minus infinity to infinity delta x dx is equal to 1 right so this implies that uh, the Dirac delta function uh, may also be represented as a limit of the Gaussian function uh, uh, what we have here uh, written right so the Gaussian function which is defined like this and when we take the limit a tends to infinity then this limit can also be taken as a representation of the Dirac delta function so viewers in our earlier uh, video uh, we have also uh, expressed the Dirac delta function uh, in terms of Lorentz function right and in this lecture we have expressed the uh, famous Dirac delta function uh, as a, a Gaussian function right and in the, our next video uh, we'll see that the Dirac delta function uh, may also be written uh, like this limit that is limit say l tends to infinity and here we have sign uh, lx over uh, pi x right so this limit also represents the uh, Dirac delta function